Welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Lexi Jong and I like to talk about luxury beauty. Today we are doing a swatch party and what we're going to do is compare the new Suku blushes. So I have two through eight. I'm still missing number one, the lilac shade, but unfortunately there, I don't have anything similar to that anyway. So we are going to be doing comparisons with other blushes. I have a ton of comparisons that we're going to go through. So let's get started. For those of you who are new to Suku or haven't seen these blushes yet, these are the new melting color powder blushes from Suku. They're made in Japan. They are five grams and I have to say they are really, really nice. So this one here is shade two. They have a creamy, kind of like a gel cream kind of hybrid texture and they feel so smooth. They go on and the whole purpose is that they are sort of, they're supposed to melt into your skin so that they look more like a cream blush, uh, but they're a powder product. So that one was number three. This is number four, which I have to say is one of my most used. And I mean, you can see how creamy it is just on my hand here. So we've got two, three, and four so far. I'm going to just kind of space these out so we have enough space for comparisons. This one is number five. This one was actually gifted to me from Suku. I purchased the other ones. Um, here is number five. And we're going to move six, seven, and eight to my other arm. So that way we have plenty of space. Now, when you purchase these, they do come with a blush brush. Um, you know, there's a little spot for the blush brush there. It does come with one. I take mine out right away because honestly, I never use them. And there is a mirror and a piece of plastic on here and these obviously come in a box. Now, the closure on these cases, these are magnetic. So they stack very nicely. They're not like the strongest magnet that's going to like drag something across your desk or something like that, but they stack very nicely. I think it's a good amount of magnetic property personally. And then this one here is number eight. So I have different, uh, I have a list of shades that people have requested to swatch. So we'll go through those, but I figure we might as well just go through most of my collection. So just a few notes though about the formula. It's really incredible. And this whole line is permanent. So I'm sure they will be adding some limited edition colors and so forth. If you look at these swatches, we don't have too many cool shades. Number two is kind of a cooler pink. And then we have three, four, five. Four is kind of neutral, but four and five are definitely warmer. Here we have six, seven, eight. Seven's a little bit cooler, um, but both six and eight are going to be a bit warmer. So these are the blushes. And let's take a look at some swatches. All right, so first we're gonna start with the newer Chanel blushes that have come out. So this one here is Corail Etoile. And we're gonna put this one over here. So these are, this is from Chanel. Let's put this one right here. So you can see it's gonna be more pink than the Suku. So, and just so you can see that compared with number seven there, you can see that seven is going to be a little bit more red and a little bit more brown. Now this is Chanel Brun Russi. I love this blush. It's very similar to Chanel Brun Rouge. If you have that, I do not have that one. This is similar, but without this one has golden shimmer. So here is number eight. You can see that Brun Russi is going to be very, very close. I feel like Brun Russi is just going to be a little bit more golden. And again, it does have a little bit of golden shimmer in there. So I think that's making the difference. But I feel like the undertones on here are actually a little bit more red, but the overtones are a little more golden, if that makes sense. So if you kind of remove that golden shimmer, I feel like eight is slightly cooler than, I mean, not eight, sorry, Remmer C is slightly cooler than number eight. Um, but I think they're pretty close. This one just looks a little bit more, it has like a touch more red. And then this here is Peche Rosé. We're going to look at this one over with these here. Now I'm going to put this one down like this because here is number four, which is actually a bit more brown on the cheek. 
But you can see here that Peche Rosé is kind of a mix of three, four, and five. So it's definitely peachier, like if you mixed three and five together, but um, you know, that mix kind of at a glance looks closer to four. Now, if you see how this is fading out, this one also has gold shimmer like the Burma C, but I find that the gold shimmer is more pronounced in the Peche Rosé. So continuing with Chanel, this is 330 Rose Pétillant. This came out as limited edition a couple years ago, and I think it is one of the best blush shades from Chanel. Um, but you can see that it is going to be softer, and you know, it's a little bit, a little bit cooler. Um, but I feel like if you were able to build it up to the same color level, they'd be pretty comparable. All right, so this one here is 64 Pink Explosion. So let's take a look at that one here. And you know what? Let's just do it on this half so we can kind of have more space. But you can see that this is definitely going to be cooler in tone. This one also has just a touch of shimmer in it as well. You can see there's a little bit of shimmer in there. Now, these Suku blushes do not have any shimmer, but they do sort of have a little bit of a satin finish. There are no glitter particles or anything in them, though. At least no visible glitter particles. And then moving on, we have Rose Petal, number 99. And this one here is one of the newer formulas. Mm, I'm just going to put this one here. So it's actually going to be kind of more of a cross between two and three. This one here is Foshia Rosa, and let's put that one right here with number three. You can see it's gonna be more pink though. This one here is number three. It's kind of actually a little bit closer to two, but warmer. Here is 260 Alizan, and there's actually a little bit of gold shimmer in this. Let's put this one right here. Um, and you can see that this is not going to quite go. Again, this one's going to be a little bit cooler in tone as well. And then we have Malice, number 71. And let's put that one, we'll put it right here. Mm -hmm. This one here is Jersey. And I have to say, number four has always reminded me of Jersey. So we're going to put Jer Jersey right here. But you can see that Jersey is going to be cooler in tone than number four from Suku. This one here is Rose Rubin, and put this one right up top. And yeah, this one's gonna be a little bit cooler in tone. There's also a little bit of plum in Rose Rubin. And then we have Rose Bronze, number two. Let's put this one down with number four. Mm, too too light <laughs> and it's also going to be cooler in tone as well and then we have the florida prom top so this is the spring duo we're going to technically this side's a highlighter and this side is a blush but we're just going to put both of them here we're going to look at this over here near three so this one's going to be a little bit more pink than number three and i'll just put the highlighter here so you can see the tone but I'd say they're they're fairly close, but definitely the Suku has more orange in there. And then this is Le Chen de Chanel. This one's more of a metallic shimmer. And I think this one might go better with number seven or even eight. Hmm. So here, here's Le Chen and here is eight. Actually goes better with eight, I would say. So actually this one's eight, sorry. This one is the um, Bramusi. All right, so you can see then that it's gonna be cooler in tone. It's actually much closer to Bramusi. All right, moving on to Tom Ford. This is number six, A Flame. And let's go ahead and we'll swatch both shades up here. Let's go this way. Okay, the darker shade's actually kind of closer to number two here. I think those are actually pretty close. There's a little bit more red in here than there is in the Suku. The Suku is a little more pink instead of red, but they're pretty close. All right, let's take a look at number three, Peach Poison. 
So we're gonna look at both of these shades here. And let's put, we'll put the darker shade down here between seven and eight so we can kind of see how that goes. So here's eight, here's seven. It's closer to eight. I really don't think that's that close though. And then let's look at the orangier side here next to six. And then putting that next to three, I actually think that is closer to three. Let's swatch those together. Okay, so here is number, or here is three from Peach Poison. Now, when you get them up close, you can see this one is more yellow and more orange. Cherry Blaze, let's look at this darker one here um, with the pinks. Yeah, you know, that's actually, mm, it's too red. It doesn't go with, with any of these shades. Now, the lighter shade here, though, is a bit peachier. So let's put that one right there. No, it's not going to go with that or with that. And here's Sun Drunk. Let's just go ahead and check these out for completion shade's sake. Um, but I don't think they're really going to go very well. So let's put the deeper one here. I don't really think... Tonal, tonally, it's probably closer to seven. Uh, the lighter one, let's squeeze that in right here. Mm, nope, it's gonna be too too much brown in there. It's too nude. And then this one here is Explicit Flush, number two. So let's take the lighter shade and put that over here near four. Let's try and make that a little bit darker. This is a, a light shade though. Um, yeah, not quite right. And then for the darker shade, let's try that over here with number six, up top here. Oh, too pink, let's try it on the other arm. Okay, so here's this one, and let's squeeze that in here, see where that goes. It's still too pink for Suku number three, but too orange for number two, doesn't go with four or five. Moving on to Shantakai, this is the Radiance Cheek chic, chic Duo. This one here is in rose. Let's take a look at the rose shade here. And compared to number two, they're actually gonna be closer. Suku is actually gonna be a little bit cooler in tone than the Shantakai there. And let's take a look at the coral one here. And I think here is, yeah, it, it's gonna be, too much red compared to Suku number three. And it's, yeah, definitely too much red compared to six as well. Let's look at the holiday blush. This is going to be in Akoya. Again, this is still Shantakai. This actually does have a similar texture to the blushes. You can see that this is gonna be cooler in tone and it kind of, it has a sheen to it, it has a shimmer. It's a really beautiful blush. Formula-wise, I feel like these are fairly similar in formula texture. So if you're familiar with this and you like it, I think the Suku blushes would be one that you like as well. The Suku is like, you can see when you touch this, um, that, I don't know. I mean, the textures are not complete dupes, but you can see that the when you touch this, you get kind of that creamy look, but can you see a little bit of like the powder and so forth? With the Suku, however, it actually looks slightly creamier. Now, the Shantakai Philanthropy blushes are definitely gonna be a lot lighter, but here is Emotion, or B. I just want to see how those colors go. Uh, this one's more coral, this is more peach. This one here is Joy, the horse. And we'll stick that one here. Let's see how that goes. Those are close. So here's Joy versus the Suku. Joy is a little bit cooler in tone, but they're pretty close. Here is Laughter, which is the one with the coral on it. Let's put that one near number three here. Too pink. Grace, the sea turtle. Let's try this one near number four. And here's fours, squeeze that in right there. This one is too pink, too red. 
Here is Smitten the Elephant. And let's try and get this one over here. So you can see the tones with Suku number three. Similar. Um, yeah, let me swatch. Let's try and get those a little closer. All right, so that's the Shantakai. Here's a new swatch of the Suku. So, I mean, they do definitely have some similarities. Obviously, the Shantakai is going to be lighter. Uh, all of these Shantakai ones are going to be much lighter and softer on the cheek, whereas the Suku are definitely more buildable. And, you know, I think those are the best comparisons. The Bliss one, there's nothing to compare in this. All right, let's take a look at Sicily. So this one here is five rosewood. And I would have to say that the formula here is pretty similar. The, this formula is very similar to the Suku. So here is seven. And you can see that the Sicily is gonna be a little bit rosier, but you know, they're probably similar in depth of color. And aside from the rosiness, yeah, I mean, they're not that close. This one here is number one, Pink Peony. This one's not really gonna go. We'll just kind of put this right up here, but I can tell you now that, yeah, you can see the tones here are very different. This is much more like a, a Barbie pink, you know, a little bit brighter and cooler. This one is number three, Coral. I love this shade. Let's try to, well, we'll put this near the other swatch here. Okay, so again, two red. Let's also look at number six with this. So this one here is number six. You can see it's pretty orangey. That's gonna be too red as well. All right, let's take a look at some Pat McGrath blushes. So this one is Paradise Venus. Let's see how this one goes with seven and eight. So again, this one here is seven and this one here on the bottom is eight. Let's put this right here. All right, and I think it's kind of a cross between the two. It's a little bit cooler in tone, but if I had to give it to one, I'd say it's closer to number seven. This one here is Nude Venus. So let's put this one near number four here. Mm, yeah, not quite. I'm gonna put a new four swatch here as well. All right, so here is four. All right, this one is Love Struck. And let's just put this, this is gonna be too bright, but let's just put that next to number two. Divine Rose, mm, it's not really gonna go with any of these. So I just wanna show you the tone difference there. This one is more movie. This one here, however, is Cherish. And this one I think has a shot. So let's get this a little bit closer. Mm, again, the Pat McGrath is gonna be cooler. And then this one here is Desert Orchid from Pat McGrath. Let's put this one down here. This is five and four. It's close to four. So there's a, a little bit more red in it though still. For Dior, this is the one that came out with the Birds of a Feather. I forget what they call it. I wish they would put the names on here, but it's number 468. And let's put that down there. This one has some shimmer in it. So again, that's four. Here's Rose Montagna. And let's see here. Put this somewhere near three here. Nope. All right, this is the other one that came out with Birds of a Feather. This is 462. Let's put this one over here. Mm, one too pink compared to number six. And let's just put it near number three as well. Three is a little bit more corally um, than six, but you can see here again, it's gonna be too red. This one, this here is number three. And then I thought this was probably my closest blush to number five. So let's take a look. This is 332, Put that right there. It's more orange. All right, so this is Rose Tan from Hermes, number 49. So let's put this one over here near number four. You can see that the Hermes is actually gonna be a little bit warmer in tone. It's a lot lighter than number eight though. This one is 32, Rose Pomette. So I figured this one might have a similarity to number two. Nah, actually, I don't think they're going to. Um, let's put that up here. 
let me get another number two. So here's number two. I'll put that right here. You can see the difference. This one is number 19, Rose Apricot. And let's get that one near number three. So here's here's three. Okay, and here is four. So I'd say it's closer to four, but it's more orangey, uh, whereas number four has more brown. And then this is number 61, Rose Fia. And I thought this one looked closer to number seven. All right, so this one here is seven. And I think they are fairly close. I mean, this one has more red, whereas there's a little bit more brown in there, but I think they're a pretty close match. All right, so that's gonna be it for my comparisons. I have to say that, um, you know, I did check the other Hermes shades, but honestly, they don't match. They are, in general, a bit cooler in tone than any of the Suku swatches. They're also gonna be lighter, the ones I didn't show. So uh, yeah, these are gonna be the best comparisons. Formula-wise for comparisons, I think the formula is closest to the Sisley Fido, uh, Fido Blush and also the Chantecaille one that came out. You know, I have the Koya, but there was one that came out last summer with the little button packaging as well. Uh, that was like an orangey shade. I didn't get that one, but those two both have the same formula. And I think this formula from Suku is similar to those. I think it's a really great formula and it really does kind of look like it has melted into your cheeks and it gives you a little bit of a sheen. So you get a sheen from using it, but again, there's no like glitter particles or anything that you can see in there. I mean, look at this. It's more so just that when you buff it in, it it has more of that satin finish and I think it's stunning. And depending on how you apply it, you don't even need a highlighter. And shades number two and or one and five, again, one is the lilac shade I don't have yet. I will be getting that when it when it's available again. Number five is kind of a, a light yellow version. So those can be used more so as mixers to kind of warm up or cool down a blush or to soften it. They can also be used kind of like as a highlighter and so forth. So for me, I won't be, I probably won't be using five on its own too frequently, but more so to mix into other shades and so forth and to layer them. And I think having those kind of mixers in this blush collection was a really smart idea for Suku because it really makes so many shades versatile. And if you buy a, a blush that you don't love, you can try mixing it with another shade, uh, like one of those and, you know, kind of, kind of get it closer to the color that you were hoping for. So Overall, I have to say that these Suku blushes are a win. I do have a little demo here applying the blush that I have on. I'm wearing number eight right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut to that demo. And you know, this has been so much fun. So I hope to see you again here. All right, so I'm gonna take the Suku blush in 08. And this is the Refer 24 brush. So I'm just gonna get a little product on here tapping off any excess on the cloth on my lap. And we're gonna put this on here. All right, so that's actually plenty of product. I'm gonna buff that in after I get some product on the other side. So just wiping off the brush and I use, yo, ah. <laughs> I chose this brush uh, because it is dense so I can use it for buffing as well. So I wiped off the excess product and now I can buff that nicely into my skin. I'm just wiping the brush off periodically, make sure I don't have too much pigment. And that's number eight. And this is the final look from a distance. So I added the Clay de Poe highlighter from the holiday in number 102, A Glow with Wonder. I love this highlighter, it's just fantastic. And then also the Suku Sheer Matte Lipstick in 106. And the lip liner that I used with that is the Pat McGrath in Half Naked. I think they're a great combo. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope all of this was helpful. And again, these blushes are permanent, so there's no rush to buy them, but 
I think they are absolutely fantastic. If Suku is something that you have access to, you know, and you happen to be interested in any of the colors, I would definitely recommend picking one up and testing out the formula and seeing what you think. But I think it's fantastic and it lasts all day, which is really amazing. So that's one of the benefits of using something like this over an actual cream blush is the longevity. There are some cream blushes that have very great longevity as well, but in general, powders last longer than cream blushes. And I have to say, these are phenomenal. So kudos to Suko, <laughs> Suko for making such a fantastic formula. I think they did an excellent job. Now, as to their previous formula, I really like that too. That was more of a softer wash of color. It was powdery finish, very light, more like ethereal. So I think there are winners in both. And if you are looking for a particular brush, I would definitely recommend using like a goat hair brush. I personally prefer like the undyed goat hair brushes that are a little bit more dense. Like today in the demo, I used the Ruffer 24 brush, which is dense enough that I can like buff the color in. But if I don't use something that dense, I recommend going over it with a buffing brush. And I have to say, I do this with all of the blushes that have this similar kind of formula, like the Sicily and the Chantecaille as well. Oftentimes I'll just start straight off with the smooth buffer from Sonia G and just get a little bit of product and put that in. One of the great things I think about these blushes is they are so buildable. You can go very soft with them if you'd like, or you can really build them up for more amplified colors. So overall, fantastic blushes. And please, if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and share this with your friends if they are looking for blushes like this. And thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great day and stay safe and healthy.